Remember that the lymphatic tissue of oral cavity is arranged in the form of a ring-like structure called Waldeyer's lymphatic ring. The tonsils are filled with lymphocytes, macrophages and macrophage-like cells and they have opening called crypts to the surface of the pharynx. Their lymphocyte respond to microbes that arrive by way of ingested food as well as inspired air. Similarly, the lymphocytes in the lining of the various tracts exposed to the external environment respond to infectious agents that penetrate the lining from the lumen of the tract, whether it is respiratory tract or digestive tract. Let's talk about thymus gland. Thymus gland is also called throne of immunity or training school of T lymphocytes. It is pink grainy organ located in the mediastinum, generally just posterior to the sternum. In newborn infants and young children, thymus is relatively large, commonly extending from the base of the neck to the superior border of the heart. The thymus reaches its greatest size relative to the body size in the first year or two after the birth. Although the organ constitutes to increase in mass throughout childhood, the body as a whole grows even faster. So the size of the thymus relative to that of other organs in the mediastinum gradually decreases. The thymus reaches its maximum absolute size at a weight of about 40 grams just before puberty. After puberty or sexual maturity, it gradually diminishes in size and becomes increasingly fibrous by a process called involution. By the time an individual reaches age 50, the thymus may weigh less than 12 grams. Thymus is also called receding endocrine gland. The gradual decrease in the size and secretory abilities of the thymus may make the elderly individuals more susceptible to disease. The capsule that covers the thymus divides it into two thymic lobes. Fibrous partitions called septa originate at the capsule and divide the lobes into lobules averaging 2 millimeters in diameter. Each lobule consists of a densely packed outer cortex and a paler central medulla. Lymphocytes in the cortex are dividing. As the T cells mature, they migrate into the medulla. After roughly three weeks, these T cells leave the thymus by entering one of the medullary blood vessels. Lymphocytes in the cortex are arranged in clusters that are completely surrounded by reticular epithelial cells. These cells, which developed from epithelial cells of the embryo, also encircle the blood vessels of the cortex. The reticular epithelial cells maintain the blood thymus barrier and secrete thymic hormones that stimulate stem cell division and T cell differentiation. As they mature, T cells leave the cortex and enter the medulla of the thymus. The medulla has no blood thymus barrier. The reticular epithelial cells in the medulla cluster together in connective layers forming distinctive structures known as thymic corpuscles or Hessel's corpuscles. Despite their imposing appearance, the function of these corpuscles is still not properly understood. Perhaps these are phagocytic. T cells in the medulla can enter or leave the bloodstream across the walls of the blood vessels in this region or within one of the efferent lymphatics that collect lymph from the thymus. Thymus produces several hormones that are important to the development and maintenance of normal immunological defenses. Thymosin is the name originally given to an extract from the thymus that promotes the development and maturation of lymphocytes. This thymic extract 
actually contains several complementary hormones thymosin A, thymosin B, thymosin 5, thymopoietin, thymulin and others. The term thymosin is generally given in a collective way and it refers to all these hormones.